everybody to this month's webinar. I'm thrilled to have my friend Mark on here who's going to educate myself um, as well as all of you on something that I'm really excited to learn. It's his famous Rose series and I've actually been going through uh, the mini course Mark that you just put together and uh, I can't wait. I'm actually coaching some games today and we are going to be implementing some Rose series stuff. It's just that good. Um, so welcome, really grateful to, uh, to have you on, really grateful that you're going to be serving all these coaches. Um, coaches, welcome, really excited to have you on as well. Please drop into the chat box your name and where you're dialing in from and what level you coach. And throughout uh, this webinar here, we're just on a mission to serve you and provide you as much value as we can. So if you have any questions that come up, please drop those in the chat box and we'll do our absolute best to get to them. Um, Mark, I know uh, from the first time they actually got to hear and see you teach, we're both presenting at the Hoosier Gym Clinic um, in Indiana a couple of years ago, and uh, just, I just resonated with the way that you taught, um, just like your heart for service and your willingness to challenge traditional thinking and modernize basketball. Um, and I think you've done that here in this Rose series as well. So maybe you can tell you know myself and the viewers, so why the Rose series? Like what made you want to create this and put this course out into the world? Yeah, um, I will share those same sentiments seeing you present at the Hoosier Clinic. So uh, kudos to you. And you. Uh, also just quick, thank you for having me. I never turned down an opportunity to serve coaches. So honestly, pleasure is mine. And uh, uh, glad to hear that you're going to be running some Rose series today as early <laughs> as today. Uh, because that is my goal is anytime I'm a guest on anything is I want coaches to take away something practical that they can implement as early as today with their programs, because that's what I got. That's what I look for out of coaching clinics uh, still today. So um, thank you. And uh, excited to share Rose series, excited about the mini course, because I've never shared it in a course before. Um, and so this will be fun. And I think it's important because of the hundreds of coaches that I've spoke with, met, consulted with, this might be your experience too, Tyler, but they're, they're in two camps. They're either running traditional offense, something like motion or read and react, or they are running conceptual offense. Oftentimes it is dribble drive, kind of our generation of coaches. That was like the big wave of modern basketball coming through. And I hear from those two coaches and the motion coaches want more space, more freedom, more modern basketball. And sometimes the conceptual coaches uh, want more structure, more ball movement, more player movement. They just need something where their players don't feel so isolated on the floor. They want more synergy, more cohesion. And Rose series has really done that uh, with our offense, because I always joke, there's no better coach to help uh, other coaches through this evolution because I am that coach still to this day. I'm a motion guy at heart. That is my background. That was the first, really my first basketball experience. I've run dribble drive. I went back to motion. And then now we found drive and space, uh, which is right in the middle. You get the best of both worlds in Rose series is really the backbone of that. So I'm going to share Rose series. Well, let me interject real quick, Mark. Okay. Yeah. Because um, we have a lot of coaches active in the chat already. So you know, okay. welcome doc. Welcome, uh, Jamar. Welcome, Toby, Jeremy, James, uh, Elite Eight Basketball Academy. I'm really interested. I'd love to get interaction here. So let me ask everyone here that's live in the chat box, please type one of these two things in. This will be interesting for me. Um, is your desire right now for your offense, is your desire structure or freedom? Uh, are you here because you're looking for a little more structure in your offense? Or are you here because you're looking for a way to get more freedom in your offense? Just please type one of those two words into the chat box. Do you feel like your offense would benefit from a little more structure, which a lot of the coaches that I work with in the race and space right now, they're like, okay, now we're playing principles. Now we're playing fast. Players have a ton of freedom. What happens when we don't have dominoes? We don't have advantages anymore. What do we do now? So they need a little more structure, right? That would be a race and space coach. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and update you as, uh, as the, the chat box here will be populating with whether you want more structure or freedom. Um, I'll update you in a moment. Matt, freedom, Blair, freedom. Okay, freedom's up early. Kevin, um, oh, Kevin hasn't told me yet. Welcome, Kevin. Um, okay, we're looking for a little more structure um, as well. So go ahead, I'll throw it back to you. Oh, Ray, another freedom. Freedom's winning right now. Marshall, freedom. Um, Lance, freedom. 
Okay, a lot of freedom. All right, this is good. So there you go. You have some information. Freedom's ahead of structure right now. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that that's in line with both of our mission is most coaches are coming from structure. And I apologize, I'll be quick, Mark. I told you I was gonna do this. Um, but, but here is my theory on why most North American coaches need more freedom. Most North American coaching tradition, if we go back 20, 30, 40, 50 years, come from an American football background. Uh, American football has been the driving force in athletic departments for decades and decades and decades. And so the most respected and loudest voices in athletic departments has been football coaches. And so a football coach will go and then coach another sport like basketball. And football is stop, look over at coach or get the play call, run at an exact structured play, stop and run it again. And I think that that tradition has impacted and infected basketball tradition. And so most basketball coaches traditionally are more structure. Whereas my background has been more international football or soccer. Yep. I knew uh, which you, were, is, you were going with this. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And so it's been way more freedom, play according to principles, develop players with tools so that your skill development actually informs your menu of options in your offense. And so for those of you that might be new to savvy or new to what Mark teaches as well, um, understand both Mark and I are aligned in um, we come from a more freedom background, not your more traditional background. And, that, and that's that's our that's our mission is to help you coaches modernize what you're doing. So I love to hear I, um, I see two structures right now and about 25 freedoms. So there's some information for you, Mark, as you go in. Rose series will help you with that. So so the ball's back to you. Thanks for letting me talk. Yeah, uh, that's great. I mean, look, soccer is spacing and ball movement. Right. And that's what we really try to incorporate. If you did, you know, they'll, they'll Chuck Daly quote, offense is spacing, spacing is offense. We all agree with that. And then we go maybe run an offense that doesn't have great spacing it, because it's what we know. And, and as you said, um, so uh, given that I want to share a, I'll share a principle of play that is within the drive and space offense. And it's something that coaches probably are familiar with, but maybe they haven't taught their team in this way. So I'll get to that um really really quick here uh but the idea is this principle of play uh that i'm going to share rose series what i'm going to share is going to help you create more space more advantages while maintaining ball movement and player movement the goal being get you great shots you get great shots you win more games okay uh, so that is the goal I, with these coaches that want structure or excuse me want freedom i would guess we have a lot of read and react coaches in here, which is probably the, the number one uh, coach that that reaches out to me. Um, so we'll kind of play on that as well, too. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll jump right in if that's OK. Let's do it. All right. Um, so we are going to look at fast draw here and let's get to the principle that can help you today. So whether you're a four out coach or maybe running a five out um drive and space alignment it sounds like we may have more coaches uh in the camp that i'm going to get to here but want to start with the principle i'm sharing are the gap principles within the drive and space offense but it can be in the race and space it can be in read and react or motion whatever you're running you can adapt this principle into so bear with me here um First, in a four out alignment, you're going to arrive with one single gap and two double gaps on either side. I've seen a lot of coaches call this a triple gap. Uh, I would disagree with that because I think you're, we're removing one player. So if we're taking a single gap, remove one player, that's a double. Over here on the right side, we remove two players to make a one, two, three triple gap. Okay. Uh, so just so we're all on the same page of our gaps, uh, if you are running maybe more traditional uh, motion or read and react, you're likely in a traditional five out alignment, which is going to give you a lot of single gaps. Okay. So here's the principle that I want you to take to your program today. Uh, this is going to help your players know when to pass, when to drive. So we're giving them some structure, but there's a whole lot of freedom from choice there. So uh, these are all single gaps and our rule our guiding principle is that we pass through single gaps because there's not a lot of space. If I went to uh, my 
uh, sports code or my huddle, you would see my team driving single gaps and turning the ball over because it's just not good space. Um, so we pass through single gaps and we drive through double and triple. So in this scenario here, player one could drive to their right. We would want to avoid a drive to our left because that's the single gap. Okay. Now, that's the principle. Drive through big gaps, pass through small gaps. If I had to explain it to a youth team, that's what I would, that's how I'd explain it. And then rows series can expand these gaps. We can turn a single into a triple gap or a double into a triple gap. Uh, and that gives us some structure for how we move the ball. So this is how I would teach that. If I'm going to put this in, if, if we were uh, coming to your school, to uh, install this, or if you were, you were going to work with this and install this principle with your team, uh, this is called Canada Rules. And it's uh, a game from, uh, that I got from Mike McKay. And what I love about this is your team doesn't have to know any offense to play this game. And you can start with a games approach. So picture that we're four on four here. Okay. And this is the way I would start it. We're four on four. You can only have one player in a box. If there's two players in a box, you could maybe start by recreating. We're going to stop. We're going to talk about how this would not be a great drive for two because it's a single gap. Let's recreate player two. If you could do that again, where would you drive? Well, I would drive to my right. Okay, let's take it from there and play. As you progress, you can just make it a turnover, and that would remove the offense if two players are in the same box. So this, here's how the game would be played. If we just started the ball here, uh, player two could pass to four because that's a single gap or they could drive through the big gap. Uh, let's say we drive through the big gap. So we're gonna drive, this is gonna one, teach players to hold their spacing. A common problem that you might get is player one coming out of the corner. If he comes out of the corner, it's gonna be an automatic recreate or turnover, right? So that's gonna help us hold our spot uh, and let's say player two kicks to one. Well, where does player two fill now? If we start to fill out to the corner, that's going to tell player four to bump up. So what we're doing is we're just shaping the environment to teach general spacing rules. Um, player one could technically drive to their right and get into the paint, or we could pass up to player three. If player four fills over, well, then we have to pass. So what that's doing is that's creating a single gap to the right and the left of player three. So this would be a pass, but we could also use this as a teaching tool. Player four, how could we give player three more space? Well, I would hold my spot, coach. Great. So now player three has option to pass to right or drive to their left. Um, so that we call that Canada rules. That is something that you could take uh, to your practices today and it would help your spacing, but also give players some structure for when should I drive? When should I pass? Yeah, that's really good. And just a, a little interpretation for a lot of our savvy coaches on here, that would be a great thing to use in what we call a game sandwich. And we use game sandwiches to introduce new concepts and new principles of play. So we would play a game like Canada rules and we define a game versus a drill. Just as a game is something you can win. A game is scored and you can actually win it. Whereas a drill is not something we can win. We're actually removing that outcome so you can focus on either a place of technique or a place of learning where your success isn't winning the game. So we might throw a skinny drill in there, which, you know, we, maybe we do an action-based shooting. I know you're going to talk about these different actions. And then we might go to a small-sided game that's a little bit more uh, like basketball to implement it. So coaches, if you're looking to utilize, you know, Canada, if you're looking to do anything, I would encourage you to consider that game sandwich, whereas most traditional coaches begin with a drill. That's the big, big difference. Beginning with the game allows them to discover their own solutions, which will then embed it further so that it will actually transfer. So consider using game sandwiches with all the stuff that Mark is sharing with us today. Yeah. And, and so one thing I did, like I said, I would start that four on four and it's going to be ugly. It's going to be sloppy and messy and that's okay. If, if we just can't get it, then remove the defense if needed, right? Mm -hmm. And make it more drill, uh, get them comfortable just passing through singles, driving through the doubles, uh, and then add defense back, which is basically a sandwich uh, that you, yeah, can, you, know, you know, start start higher level and you can always scale back rather than feeling the need to start at a lower level. Yeah, and one other thing that Austin put in the chat, 
uh, real quick, Mark, that I like is when they do the Canada rules, they actually move that free throw line up to the th top of the key, three point line, to provide even more space in the habit of playing even higher and wider. Yeah, and we have a, we've moved that around too. We've actually moved these lines, created more lines. That way, we can incorporate row series into it and all kind of mm -hmm. fun stuff. Um, yeah, that is a great point. I love uh, being sign of a good coach is you can take these things and move it and adjust it and be flexible and all this should look different. So um, I forgot that coach's name, but I love it. Good job. Um, here's just some clips uh, of us just playing through gap principles. So I think there's three possessions here. Wanted to share these. I, I'm press play here in a second. Uh, before I do just pay it, don't pay attention to the actions or cuts or anything. We're going to get to those. Just pay attention that we're passing through small gaps, we're driving through big gaps, uh, and we're not we're not dictating action. We're, it's not a set play. It's very conceptual, and players are just flowing, uh, and we're just attacking optimal space. In fact, in this first possession, I don't think we ever drive a big gap. It's all just single gap passes where it looks kind of like a motion offense, but um, we're just playing. We're just playing out of those those gap principles. And one more possession here. So easy as that, I think you could, now obviously we taught players when we pass, what do we do when we cut and all that stuff. And that's gonna be part of your offense, but uh, take the principle, take the game um, and, and apply it. I think that's something you can take to your program today. And I just love, even just looking at that, I love how much space they were playing with right there. And I think just wanna emphasize that, like when your goal coaches is scoring, your spacing often suffers. But when your goal is spacing, your scoring is going to benefit. And so just like moving the goalpost a little bit and defining what your victory is for your team. I mean, it, we all wish we had more skilled players. The easiest way to a better team is better players. We all wish we had more skilled players, but skill takes time. So the greatest gift you can give a less skilled player is space. And that's what, that's what everything that Mark is teaching us today about Rose Series is really doing. How can you give your team the gift of space so that less skilled players can be more effective? Yep, absolutely. Um, all right, Tyler, you good if we jump in the Rose series here? I can't wait. All right, let's do it. So uh, I want to just share exactly what Rose series is, because like I said, I've never really given this out in a mini course, um, certainly not a free webinar. And, and honestly, I used to uh, give it all out, but then I noticed that it, it wasn't serving coaches in the best way because uh, they didn't have the context, they didn't have the details. So what I really want to do today give you what Rose series is and share a bunch of details that even if you're running some of this stuff uh, can maybe give you some new knowledge, can help you uh, against different um, defenses or just to make it a little bit more effective for you. And then hopefully we can carve out some time. I want to tackle what we do against switching defenses here at the end, because that's the number one question bar none that I get from coaches all over. So um, as I said, I was a motion coach. I was a dribble drive coach. I went back to motion and all during that um, time or those kind of transitions, I was trying to find a way to blend both strategies, principles, tactics together. And Rose series has been the number one way that we have done that, stole a lot of, of actions and ideas from coaches all over the country. Uh, and I named it Rose series one because this was mid 2000s. Derek Rose was the name at Memphis. Um, and I wanted it to communicate to my players that Rose was a series of cuts or a menu of actions that they can choose from. So a lot of people will say we run the Rose offense or we run the Rose cut. And I'm, I'm thinking, well, what cut? Because there's up to six actions that we're currently using in Rose and some have kind of come and gone. We have our staples that I'll share today. Uh, so that's what Rose Series is, is when we have the, what we would say the top squared. So the action spots, players one and two here, anytime we are in the action spots, that is a trigger for Rose Series. So when the ball comes here, that is normally a shoot it or move it spot for us. Let's say we had the pass up from a corner player here. 
in the money spot and they came up to player one, it's usually a shoot it or move it scenario for player one. Because if we shoot it, obviously we're open, we're playing, taking advantage of advantage. If we drive it, we would be driving it back to the right side where the ball came from. It's a double gap, but not the best to drive it back to the same side. And if we go over to two, now we're in Rose series. So instead of just driving, we're creating space and advantages, and that's going to open up a triple gap for player two. So anytime ball is in the action spot, that is our trigger for Rose. So we want to square the, the top as much as possible, whether we're four out or five out. Okay. So what the first cut, the first cut I want to share would be what we called fingers. And I'll, I'll tell you why we called it fingers here when we get to the film. But basically a fingers cut is a 45 degree cut. And what we're doing is we're disguising a screen as a cut. Where if you think maybe for a race and space coach or somebody that's using a ghost screen, you're really disguising a cut as a screen. We're coming into the you know, maybe player one is coming into this screen here, looking like a screener, but we're really just cutting out of it, right? With our pop. Fingers is the exact opposite. We're disguising a screen as a cut. So ideally, we're trying to create a little rub here for player two to get downhill, uh, which we see in this scenario here. So as player one comes through, if we can create traffic, a rub screen, that's ideal. But I like this diagram here because I want you to notice we have our gap principles. Anytime we run a rose cut, we create a single gap to one side and a triple gap to the other side. So this is how rose series and our gap principles fit in. By one passing, fingers cut, player two now has options. Uh, so we're guiding behavior. We're not dictating the behavior. And we're giving players, if you want freedom, well, now we have the freedom to drive right or pass left. It doesn't matter what player two um, chooses. We can play off of either one of those. In fact, if we pass down to three, player two's cut is going to give three a triple gap to their right and a single gap to their left. So we're always creating the A-B option for our players. Um, which one they choose, I get this a lot. Well, how do they know what to do? What's the read? You can make it a read, maybe. I mean, obviously attack close out with, you know, defenses crowding you, take it by them. But I think it's more important to just be decisive, fast and free. Pick one and go with it. Maybe if this is a left-handed player, maybe they pass to the left instead of drive to their right since they're left-handed. Or if this is one of your best guys or girls on your team, I would tell player two, hey, when you have a triple gap, you need to drive that 75% of the time because that's what you give us. You're the guy or the girl on the team that can create their own advantage. Okay. Um, and Mark, maybe I can just interject something there um, as well. So most of the coaches that I work with, both in person as well as virtually, they find that their biggest pain point isn't what action to run or what rose series option to run it's that their players do it faster and execute it more decisively and so i think i, I think like that's really the goal of rose series it, it's it's less about okay which one are we in it's like let's do one let's create a triple wide gap let's get back into our advantage game as quickly as we can actually one of my good friends uh works with uh, some of the best nba players in the world and what he's told me is he when he's working with his players and they're breaking down film he'll often ask, okay, why did you choose to shoot a runner here instead of a, a pull-up on, on this ball screen against drop coverage? Why did you go runner instead of pull-up? And, and, and he might prefer a pull-up for that player instead of a runner, but if the player says, I just feel more confident in my runner, he's like, then shoot the runner. Like, do what you feel confident in and do it assertively. Don't do it with any sort of doubt because he's found that when players do things with confidence as opposed to any sort of, am I doing the right thing? they're more successful. And I found the same thing with any sort of team actions. Like if a player does it with confidence and, and assertiveness and force, it's going to be more effective if they do the quote unquote right thing with a little bit of doubt or slowness. And so I, I think that's what we're trying to create with this freedom is the freedom for players to do things that they're more confident in. Yeah. Uh, let me piggyback there. I, I yeah. love, I mean, this is fun because every time you say something, I, it's like it resonates something with me. Um, 
a lot of coaches will ask that, you know, uh, well, how do you, how do you get that good balance? And a lot of times it just works itself out because players are going to play to their strengths as long as we're encouraging them to play to their strengths and defining roles. And I always use the analogy that I heard a, a quote years ago, no man or woman fears what they're good at. So Tom Brady, you put him under, under center or in the shotgun, he's probably the most comfortable man on the planet. And then they go wildcat and they split them out wide and he's a receiver and he, he looks extremely nervous and uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. So usually players are going to naturally gravitate to what they're good at anyway, and it works itself out. If it doesn't, that's what a coach's job is, right? Is to help them get to where they can't go themselves. Yeah. Um, so a quick warning to coaches, and this comes from experience and failure on my part for many, many years. If you find that your players are not operating from a place of confidence and aggressiveness and power, it's probably because you are overcorrecting their decisions. And so like it, it, basketball is a game of opposites. That's one of the principles we believe in here of savvy. So if you want them to play with more confidence and effectiveness, you actually have to undercorrect them and allow them to experiment and find their own solutions. And I think that's really what this like this principle is, even in Rose series, is like, here's a series of solutions to creating space and triple wide gaps. Now let's let individual players, you know, try to self-correct. And the only other thing I'll interject here for our race and space coaches is Rose series is a wonderful, um, a wonderful solution to your 11 second game. All right, what's your first action when you no longer get in dominoes from racing? Right. Okay. Let's flow directly into row series. It's, it's a, it's a really effective 11 second game. Probably the next step for someone that has implemented race in space has maybe tried just a ghost as your 11 second game. You want some more options in this menu row series is it. And that's why I'm so excited for Mark to, to share this course and to consult for all of our savvy coaches over the next month to help you install the row series answer questions you have, identify the best ones for you. So um, just wanted to interject that, that that's going to be an option for all of our coaches that choose to work with Mark over the next month to really learn how to make row series their own. So back to you, Mark. I just wanted to make sure yeah. they have that option. Love it. All right. So I wanted to look at um, some of our fingers cut. So ball was down. It comes up. Ball is in the action spot. So just like Tyler was saying, this player with the ball has a menu of actions. What he chooses, it does not matter, but it's going to be something that we practice and something that we've taught. In this case, it is a fingers cut. I want you all to see our cutter here. We'll, we'll play it a couple of times, and then I'll just let the other ones run. Our cutter is not going to really change their speed or their direction to intentionally create a rub. I think that's where you get yourself in trouble. Our cut, again, it's a cut designed as a screen. That is essentially a ghost screen right there. We've rerouted this defender around us and the, the, the cutter's defender, right? So we're just creating some traffic there. Um, and then our ball handler is going to use that space and advantage to get downhill. So cutters, uh, this is a great example here. So we pass through single gap. We square the top, meaning player 23, and then number two are going to come to the action spots. This is a great example. What I want you to see here is 23's hands in the air. That's why we call it a fingers cut. Our fingers are in the air, and what that does is that tells these two officials that we are a cutter, we are not a screener, uh, and we're also telling the defense, I'm just a cutter, no need to switch uh, because we're not setting a screen. Uh, so this one was a great example of that rub here. It's not enough to call an illegal screen. Uh, we were five out here. So this could be four out, five out. So this was a double gap drive. We're still good in our gap principles there. All right, this one's egregious. Um, so for all you uh, officials out there, referees out there, maybe you could have got us on this one, but hands are in the air and we just light up number 20 here. But Again, we're not changing speed. We're not changing direction. It's just a diagonal cut, usually through the elbow, straight line to the corner. And then I think I have the reverse. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, this is a great one. So this is a team that got up and pressured a lot. Uh, so one, if we're in the action spots, get open. Okay, a lot of our adjustments and tweaks that we'll go through over the next month is how to get into rows against pressure or switching or pack. Uh, this is a great one. We just create a little bit of indecision here, a little traffic. Player three looks like he's thinking switch. Uh, 
So we get a really late switch by 15, just late to recognize it. Um, and then if we have, I think we do have time. I do want to deep dive into how we counter the switch. Um, Tyler, any questions? Yeah, let, let me throw two questions out to you first um, before we go. So one question that we got is, what, what would it actually look like from a four out and a five out? I know that's one thing that you're going to go deep into over the next month, like through all of the room series, four out, five out. But like, that's, that's kind of like the top question that we've gotten is, how do you, what would you do differently? Yeah. Um, one thing, so this is four out and five out, if you can see this. Sure. One thing I would not do differently is change our two guard front. And this was the big shift for me. And, and again, this, I've been running this for over 10 years. So this thing has changed so much and tweaked and it's been refined. Um, we started four out. We got to the point, in fact, a lot of the clips from the team that you were just watching, uh, number 44, who got the left-handed drive. He was the one that set the really egregious fingers cut. He was a six, seven. That was not a post player. Mm -hmm. And one of my assistants said, so we're going to, we're going to put him in the post next year. And I said, no, because we wouldn't be doing our jobs. He's not a post player. We got to figure this thing out. So we went from four out to five out. So we moved our porch or our dunker into what we called the stretch. Uh, we just wanted to stretch uh, the defense horizontally. Uh, your porch and you're playing at the four point line or the vertical stretch. So we wanted to make sure we were playing really high and wide up here in the action spots. And I wanted player five to be right on top of player four. So what this does, let's say player two pass to, to player one. Here's the change. Uh, player two is going to fingers cut. So we have mm -hmm. double gap to our left, single gap to our right. There are things you can do with four and five to create a triple gap. You don't have to. That simplicity wins. The most simple thing is we are spaced. We're playing within principles. Hold your spot until maybe a cue might tell you to burn. Um, but as long as we have this spacing here, we're good. Again, can do some things to open up triple gaps, and we can go over that over the next month. But that that was really the big change. Obviously, some other things to consider. Uh, you're going to have more space at the rim in five out less space on the perimeter. So there's trade-offs to everything that you do. I always make this decision based on my personnel. I don't, I wouldn't say I want to be a positionless coach. So we're sticking our five player on the perimeter or I want to be five out. We can want a lot of things, right? But this is flexible and versatile enough where it's going to fit your players uh, from year to year. And then last thing, um, there is an open post version where you don't even have to choose. Uh, a lot of high school coaches will say, well, my my varsity has a post player, but my JV, we have no post player. So next year, we're going to be five out. What would you do? And I would say I would do both. I would allow different players to fill the porch or the dunker spot, and you get the best of both worlds. But that is probably for another day. Um, so hopefully that answered question. Uh, yeah, as far as absolutely. And, and, and I think that, you know, I'll, and I'll just reemphasize, I mean, there's so much nuance to this. And Amateurs think in absolutes, experts think in probabilities. And, and that's really why this coaching thing is you're on your journey and you're growing as a coach is we want to help coaches all across the world grow from absolutes. Every time you pass, you cut, that would be an absolute, okay, to probabilities and how to teach that. And we can't do that on a 45 minute webinar. We can give you something actionable. And so that's why we work with coaches year round. And that's why over the next month, we want to help you make row series your own and find out the probabilities that will likely help you and your personnel and your situation and, and whatnot work for you. I mean, that's really the magic um, is, you know, I was telling Mark, I just got back from working with one of our Saudi programs in Idaho. And like we have tweaked race and space and lock left to suit their personnel. And over the course of the last two seasons, they've gone from winning zero games to being undefeated in the number one team in state because it's theirs and it's not, race and space it's their offense and that's really what gets exciting for for mark and myself is when we can work with you personally so we would love to help you grow for a month uh, through this stuff um, and so you'll begin to follow up email with some link and information on that um, because that's really the beauty of of what we do is when we can make it like just perfect for you so back to you mark yep uh so um are you good with diving into counter and switch or any other questions we need to take care of um all right, here, we'll do this one real quick. Austin asks, when developing your players, do you teach catch to shoot or catch to drive? 
And I, I'll let you answer first and I'll answer. And I'm excited to see what um, what our answers are, similar or different. Do you teach I, catch to shoot or catch to drive? What I'm not going to do is answer in an absolute, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, okay. uh, there. Um, my question to you would be, where is the defense, right? So uh, here, here's how we do it. We, we prescribe to shoot it, drive it, or move it. That is, yeah. along with our gap principles, the idea of I'm going to catch and be dangerous on every catch. So we're never wasting a closeout. To me, the hardest teams to play against or scout is when all five guys and girls are looking to score. That is the best offense because there's no you have to guard everybody and you have to guard every catch. You can't sag off of this player. Um, so we always went shoot it, drive it, or move it. But I think the best teams and where basketball is evolving to cutting edge is reading close out before the catch. Um, five, even five years ago, three years ago, if you watch Alabama play or even the way I was teaching it, it was catch like a shooter and we'll figure it out from there. Um, that's going to draw some longer closeout. It's going to create your advantage. And that's not wrong, but cutting edge would be we're reading closeout before the catch. So we're going to couple perception with action. What do I see out of my peripheral vision as I catch this? If I'm automatically seeing long, hard closeout where I know I can't shoot this, I'm going to catch and I'm going to be in a driver's stance, split step, stampede, whatever your terminology is. Um, I will say, the only absolute that I may use is triple threat would be our last option that we would want in there because we want to keep the ball moving in decision. Like Tyler was saying, run your stuff faster, get to your stuff faster. In decision is the worst decision. So whether you pass up a shot or I, I should have drove this one, but I shot, it doesn't matter. Let's remain the actor and make defense the reactor. That was long story long. Sorry, Tyler, you, you interject here. No, I so good. And, and like, and then the, like, but that question is essential. If you if your players can't make your advantage reads when they're in dominoes, then all of this work that we do to create those catches for them will be useless. And so let's not forget that your skill development is your offense. And I'll just say one step further is that the skill set that each individual player has will determine their options of drive or shoot. If someone is an incapable shooter, it just removes that option for them. And I think that's the other aspect that we really do teach in race and space as we identify roles and reads. What reads do each, does each player have? And so a certain player might not even have the option to make the shot read, or they might not have the option to make the drive read. They might not have the option to make the drive or the shot read, and so they're just a mover. And like when you limit, when you constrain their options, they can make even quicker reads and decisions. And so that would be probably another piece of nuance as well um, down the road outside of like your sandbox time. Sandbox time is when they're exploring the edges of the sandbox, they're developing, expanding their skill set. When you go into war games, when you're preparing to actually win games, then we will constrain. And your ability as a coach to operate in both sandbox and war game time throughout your entire season will ensure that your team and players are both growing and performing. And so I think that's that's another essential it depends answer as well. So um, a lot of content there. That's probably a whole nother month cohort deep dive, how to develop more reads and options for players, but it is the right question, Austin. Yeah, it, it's a great question. Okay. Um, gosh, I could piggyback there. I'm gonna refrain that. Okay, <laughs> I know, so yeah, I know. <laughs> we're gonna, uh, let's look at how we attack the switch because that this is the number one uh, counter that defense will will run and everybody is switching now. Um, so first thing I want to share is, uh, we like to say it, so space it, um, split it, uh, yeah, yeah, snap it. So smash it. There's a lot of it's that would just kind of sticky language that we tell our players, this would just be attack it. But the way that we want to attack the switch would be get vertical on the catch. So we're going to pass across and this is a fingers cut. But watch the ball handler attack their man first and then to space. And I'm going to get game film here. But what this does is if you imagine a defender guarding this, this cutter here on the fingers cut, it's going to pull him way over here. And it's going to create a little bit more time and space for our offensive player to just attack the triple gap. So we're almost foregoing the rub a little bit because if we rub, they switch. So take away the rub, create space. Uh, best way to attack space, again, play your man first, space second. So that is, even if you're running fingers right now, if you have some driving space coaches in here, um, I would highly suggest 
adding that principle in. Nice stride stop donut there too. Okay, mm -hmm. so a couple of game clips here. So attack your man, then to space. Okay, and you can see this indecision in the switch. They actually wanted to switch this one but they're just unsure of the switch. Okay, one more clip here. Not a great camera angle. Ball's in the action spot. We go fingers. We attack our man to our right, knowing that we have big gap to our left. And then we turn small advantage into big advantage, which is probably another uh, mm -hmm. as well. Um, okay, couple, so that would be how we just attack it. Um, have some more game film. Uh, another way to attack it. So some nuance here would be, find my screen share here, would be to change your pace. Okay, so uh, let's see if I can press play. All right, so we go across here. So this is our fingers cut. Watch ball handler, just slow down a little bit, a little hesitation. Again, that's going to take this switching cutter uh, the switching defender away from the cut and just allow you to play into to a big gap. That was a double gap out of our five out. Here's one. Uh, it's going to be a triple gap because we're coming to the single side. Nice little hesitation. I'm going to back that one up and let it play. But we just take the switch out. Actor versus reactor. I slow down. Again, we have a head of steam. Uh, and then this is actually taking that switch. Uh, nice long limb finish there. So that's where I would start. The next thing would be just wash it, just play it. I, I think at times coaches overthink things and they assume just because defense is switching, we can't score. Well, we switched uh, for years defensively and we never held anybody to zero points. Uh, so you're going to score. Don't overthink it. We would say just wash it. It's going to play out in the wash. In this case, uh, we get downhill versus the switch into a Barkley post up and we're able to score there. That was uh, one of our stronger guards here. And then this is another principle. Uh, we called this punch. We're gonna penetrate, pitch. We got a, a mismatch here. We got a mouse in the house. So we're gonna penetrate, pitch, and then now we're gonna post them. And then we could go split off of that. We could get to our post, but, but here we just did a really nice job. Uh, that player probably regret, regret switching that one. He got a a sternum full of shoulder there. Uh, and then a, another way to just wash it would be to swing it, okay? So if they're switching your fingers cut, we can't always choose to drive triple gap. You can see this player kind of teeing up the switch, not actively following our cutter here. In fact, that is the switch right here. So we see the switch, pass it through single gap. That is one of our principles. And then we play from there, end up getting big advantage shot here. So again, part of not overthinking it uh, is just letting it play out in the wash, but teaching your players some details instead of just saying, just play, let's give them some tools. And again, all that aligns with your skill development too, as far as uh, connecting skill development to your offense. Yeah, that's good. Kevin asked, and I think that last clip may have answered your question, Kevin, what happens when you do get that pass to the wing. Kevin called it two passes to three. So they would just make that diagonal pass, diagonal cut to the opposite corner to then reestablish a triple gap or? You could, yes, that okay. was one. So again, we always have AB at least, right? That way we're not dictating, we're guiding behavior. Another thing you could do would just be drift, uh, which I think is maybe more valuable than always cutting. You know, mm -hmm. there's a, the principle uh, or the concept of cutting versus clogging. Am I cutting the score? Am I cutting the create space? Or am I just cutting and clogging things up? I like drifting a lot too. So give yeah. them A, B. I think your higher level teams could maybe take A, B, C. Uh, but again, very similar to Rose series. If we pick one, we're correct. It doesn't matter which one that you do, as long as it's something that we do as a team. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I would just caution, as, as both Mark and I have seen thousands of programs, most teams especially lower level teams cut too much and don't hold space enough and so you know when in doubt i would trend towards space a little bit for a lower level team like there should be a reason for a cut yep uh and i think if you cut too much it just it creates just continuity offense right cut fill mm -hmm. cut fill cut fill um couple more if we have time so 
if you're looking for more than all right, coach is just telling me to play it right and give me some details. Here are some some actionable things that you can do again. And look, before I show all of these, please don't go try to incorporate all of these, especially we are at December 30th. Take one um, and, and just, hey, this is a great counter to the switch. We're going to get really good at this one. Um, but if you picture a team switching a fingers cut, as they switch, this player is actually going to be on the wrong side of our offensive player. He's going to be out of position if we get the ball to the other side of the floor. So we call this a smash cut, and it's essentially slipping your cut. So as we cut, we're just going to cut right back to the ball side. Uh, you could call that a seven cut. A, you know, we call it a smash cut. Uh, it's great in the five out. Uh, can be used in the four out as well, but it is just a cut and a cut back. I have one more clip of it out of four out. That was out of five out. So this is us smashing it here. We are in the action spots. We go guard to guard. Man, this is old school. You can tell by the shorts. But we're going to just <laughs> flip the screen and come right back to the ball side. At worst, that gave us a post up. Usually your primary handler is your best guard or your best scoring guard. So you're getting your, your best player, your best perimeter player, the ball right back, catch and shoot layup, or at least a post up to where we're creating gravity, flattening the defense. Um, and then this is another option where we say swing it. Uh, it might be a stampede out of the corner. So in this case, Old Dominion, uh, they started to show a lot and, and started to switch. So we just look to snap it. And then now we're creating just actor versus reactor out of this corner. So as we come up for the swing pass, again, we talk about shoot it, drive it, or move it. This is drive it. Okay? We're coming up with drive it or move it and just getting downhill and using actor versus reactor to create that advantage. I have one more of those as well. So swing, see the switch. So we're just going to snap it and get downhill. And you can see as we, we pass down, this was an opportunity where we just drifted. So we didn't want to cut here. We want to keep the paint open and just cut it. Last thing, um, and then maybe we can go some Q&A if we got time, against any switching defenses. Just something you can incorporate in the racing space or the driving space or whatever you do um, is some split game. If teams are going to switch, I think split is a great counter to switching. So if you wanted to incorporate split game or if you have split game in, some kind of screen down or screen away in, uh, you could lean on this out of road series because you know you have a switching defense. What hurts switching defense is a split cut, which kind of brings us full circle here. A split cut is we're disguising cuts as a screen, right? We're bringing two players together, it would look like a screen, and then we're just going to cut violently away. One goes to the basket, one goes away from the basket. So reminder, take one of those, maybe two, and incorporate those. You get the lowest hanging fruit and bring them into your program. I mean, gold, my mind is spinning. I can only imagine all of our coaches' mind is spinning. Let's, let's not turn off the fire hose just yet. Of course, we didn't have time to go through all of the other Rose series um, yeah. cuts and actions, but could you just name them for the coaches so they can know? And, and if you want um, all of this, you'll be getting a follow-up email, coaches, if you signed up for this webinar um, for the Rose series mini course, which has all of these, um, all, the whole Rose series. And we would love, like I've said before, if, you, if your head is spinning, we'd love to help unwind and apply all of this road series for you and your program over the next month. We're going to be deep diving and consulting with programs to install this, especially in the second half of your season. As I know you're about to play teams for the second time and you want something fresh to throw out. I mean, you're ready to progress a little bit. Um, it, this is a great thing to put in as you go into the second half of your season. So you just want to name the rest um, yeah. of what they, they'll get in the road series. Yeah, and, and really, I forgot the number one counter to uh, if people are switching your fingers cut, and that would be to run something else, right? <laughs> uh, uh, you have a menu of actions, so if they're going to switch fingers in your game planning, then we would lean on other cuts. Those cuts are fan, push, wave, follow, truck. Uh, those are all ones that we ran uh, most recently at the Division One level. You don't have to run all of those. In fact, some of those cuts are very, very similar with just a little nuance in there that can attack a sagging defense or a switching defense or a pressure defense. So um, you don't don't feel like you have to run all of those, but there are plenty of other options. And, and over the next month and, and in the course that uh, Tyler has referenced, we, we share those cuts and, and what they are and, and how we ran them. Beautiful. 
All right, uh, let's get a couple of quick questions. We're gonna get out of here um, in the next three minutes, but please don't stop asking questions for all of our coaches that are in our community. Keep the questions coming. That's why we built the community for you. Um, if you have more questions, email us, book a discovery call, completely free discovery call. We're here to serve coaches and to find out how we can discover, how we can help you grow even more, all that stuff. Um, you can find both just by DMing me on Twitter, DM Mark on Twitter, go to SavvyCoach.com or just click the link in the follow-up email. All right, let's, uh, let's fire through a couple. We'll maybe just popcorn these. And that's what I love about working with you, Mark, is um, a lot of times we have different answers that are really cool because they're aligned in principle. Um, all right, here's a question. Do you ever intentionally create a switch to get a mismatch, to get a bad defender on your best player? Yes. So that was, um, we would punch that, penetrate, pitch, post, or yeah, you could use movement. That's another counter is false motion to get uh, the switch that you want. Some people are calling that Waldo these days. Like, where's Waldo? Where is the mismatch? Absolutely, uh, we would do that. And then you can always boomerang it right back and play, which you see a lot in the NBA these days. Really good. I'm not even going to touch that one because that was so good. I will um, touch this one first and then throw this one. You, I think this is a really common one. Um, how do you connect rose series get game split game all of your other actions how do you connect it so the players can both run it in like in the same possession um or at least consecutively throughout possessions okay um i'll answer it in my way which is probably going to frustrate everyone um and then you can go ahead and give a good answer okay. um my my answer would be this why do you want to run all those different things in the same possession um it, like the goal of an action is to create an advantage Right. The goal of an action is to run action. The goal of offense is to score. The goal of offense is to, to run offense. I think too often we as coaches are too attached to running beautiful offense uh, because we think that it, like we're, we're forgetting the goal. Right. And so I think that if you're creating advantages, then there's no reason to connect them all. Like keep it real simple. The reason to maybe change your actions if you're no longer creating advantages. And so my, my question to coaches is always why? And let's just let's discover if there's a simple answer, not like throw out everything that we've worked on for the past two weeks, right? Like maybe we can just get a little bit better at what we're doing as opposed to try to learn something completely new. So that's that's that would be my first question. And honestly, in my experience, that takes care of 70% of programs. Now there might be 30% of programs that are playing against really high level defense or they are effective enough that they can add something else in. Um, but now I'll throw it to you for maybe a, a better answer. No, that, that was good. But I, I, so a lot of things going through my head. I would say uh, I agree. Let's not have running offense get in the way of scoring. But if we can't create advantages with Rose series, that's why we call it Rose series. It is a series within the drive in space. If you want to mm -hmm. mix in get game or ball screen stuff or Princeton or some of your motion stuff, you can. Um, and I would look at it uh, as if a team can guard really well individually, they can guard the ball. Well, let's challenge them to guard as a team. Um, or if they can guard space well, let's challenge them to guard action. The way I got my teams to run both series within a possession is with triggers. Uh, if then. So if the ball is in the action spot, we're in rows. If something else happens, we are in get game. Right. And now we can flow in and out of those things. And again, that gives just enough structure to where we all know what we're doing. No one's on an island wondering what's going to happen next. We have triggers and cues to look for uh, that dictate the next action as long as we're neutral. Right. If we are creating advantages, take advantage of advantage. If we're neutral, we need action and we can flow in and out of different series. Try to keep that as brief as possible. But that is uh, that is great question. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's something that we we did a really, really good job of. And that's the fun. I love that part of offense. Yeah. And I'll get us out of here um, with with a very concrete example. Again, I just came back from uh, working with one of our savvy programs. And if you ever would like Mark or myself to come in and work with your program, that juices us up. We do it in season. We do it out of season. If you're like, man, just, just come in and show us how you would actually do it. Um, please reach out. We would love to do that. So another way, so you can do it by spots on the floor. Another way that, that we just did it with this program is by sequence. So we had our 11 second game and our 21 second game. 
So if no advantage on our race, we go right to our 11 seconds. So we were preparing this team to be really good against the team they had to beat, which runs a really good two-free zone. So we said, okay, our 11 second action is going to be twist. And we don't go to twist right now, but that's our 11 second action. If no advantage on our twist, then we're going to go into fan and flare, which would be then anytime we had no advantage after twist, we have 11 seconds and 21 seconds. So you can do it by spots on the floor, by individual players. You can do it by sequence. What's your first action? What's your second action? There's so many ways, um, but like simplicity wins and you know, the, the less options and the more clarity leads to higher performance. Um, gosh, we could talk about this for a whole month, and so we will. Um, the links are in the description uh, here in the uh, in, into the live stream. You'll be getting a follow up email. We'd love for you to get the Rose series that Mark put together for you. We'd love to spend a month with you. Um, I'm Tyler. That's Mark. We're here to help. Uh, appreciate your time, and we're excited to hopefully see you in the future. Mark, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, and we're out. Yeah, we're worried about not having enough content.